that's bulging in its head. sitting on your father's throne. None of it feels real. It isn't my father's throne. This isn't Sophia any longer, Om. It's the one kingdom of Valentia. And you're going to be its first ruler. Selica. Please, don't misunderstand. I don't bear him any grudge. Not now. I just think he was a very sad man. Perhaps if I'd been there with him, I might have helped him change. If I have any regrets, it's that. I know what you mean. Neither of us got the chance to stand by our fathers. If we'd been given the opportunity to learn more about each other, maybe things would have turned out differently for us. Perhaps it was the same for Mila and Duma. Hmm. I wonder. They've been fighting for centuries, right? Seems like a lost cause to me. Oh, that's a terrible thing to say. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean any disrespect, but they're at peace now, you know? Asleep. Together. Yes. They'll look down over this new Valentia forever from their mountaintop graves. And the trees. Do you know of them, Om? They say that where divine dragons sleep, sacred trees take root and grow. Wow. Must be some trees. In time, yes. They grow for hundreds, even thousands of years. Who can say what Valentia will look like once they've matured? Will man's endeavors continue without the grace and strength of the gods? They won't continue on their own. We have to make it happen. We'll forge a land where we can do just that. All of us. Together. That sounds lovely, Om. And you're right. I know we can do it. We can. And we will. I think Mila and Duma gave us one last gift. The strength to trust in our own abilities. Anyway, it's time. Let's go, Selica. Gladly.
And so the long war drew to a close. After countless sacrifices, at last, a new peace dawned in Valentia. Was it inexorable fate that saw this conflict erupt? No man or woman alive can say. Only one truth is clear. War will come again, when man grows proud and slothful once more. And its flames will devour one and all, raging until the very earth itself lies scorched and bare of life. For whatever madness lay in the hearts of gods, a darkness deeper still beats wild in the hearts of man. <clears throat> okay. Those enemy counts don't seem accurate. Uh, yeah, no they don't. I don't know what it's referring to on that enemy count. That like really, really confuses me. Unless it's referring to their combat score maybe? I don't know. But even yeah, then, those combat scores don't seem right that. either. Okay, yeah, that actually makes a lot more sense now, looking at the combat scores. What? I think I understand the enemies count now. I'm assuming that was referring to their combat prowess score. Well, that's the only thing it could have been, because there's no way we face 2,046 enemies. Right. <laughs> Order battle, nine turns. Rebel force battle. Siege of Noi Baba. Regal Plains. Regal Falls battle. Attack on the last bastion. And the final battle was a tough one. That was one hell of a battle, though. It definitely, it definitely, I mean, that battle definitely had its ups and downs, that's for sure. But, like, it was an epic battle to kind of end off on, in my opinion. I'm happy with that. Looks we're getting to the the uh, credits now. Wait, do we get? Oh, we do get an epilogue! Yay, Noma! After after spearheading the unification of Mila of the Mila, Mila and Duma faithful. 
No Noma became the new sex high priest, despite being adored by a congregation of numbering in the tens of thousands. His friends attest that he retained his playful, light-hearted nature all his life. I always love this part. I always love the epilogue parts the best. Okay, Conrad. He wants. He was in six battles and won three of them. Post-war, Conrad put down his lance and took up a quill, beginning the long career as a civil servant. Following Meissen's retirement, he became Chancellor, shepherding Valentia's prosperity for years despite an endless chain of suitors. He remained single all his life. Zeke. Here we go. Battles 89. Victories 20. The fires of war illuminated the dark recesses of Zeke's memory, but he loves Tatiana too much to burden her with his torturous past, so he chose to bear it in silence as they lived out their lives together. Damn it, I was hoping we get more in his memory. I was kind of sad on that. Valbar. 106 battles, victory, and 29 of them. Balbar joined the One Kingdom's Brotherhood of Knights at Alm's request, where he worked to train the next generation well-loved for his open and honest nature. He spent his years happily surrounded by friends and admirers. Sorry if I'm but it's like, sorry I'm, I'm like, reading this as it appears, yeah, so it's not the easiest thing. So, after the war, Emma departed Valentia for a new land. History makes no further mention of her, but some say she became one of the finest knights in the sky, taming Pegasus, Falcon, and Wyvern, and all manner of beasts, always with friendly smiles astride her, astride her mount. I butchered that word hard. Tatiana. Tatiana prayed that Zeke's memory would remain hazy, and the two eventually did live something of a happy life. Though they were though they were parted at times, Zeke always returned to Tatiana's side in the end. Damn it, I can't skip ahead. It's annoying. Shortly after the war, Dean vanished without a trace. Along with the Brave Sword, no record exists of his whereabouts thereafter. That's pretty standard, actually. A couple of characters always do disappear for the end. Successfully reunited with her sisters, Est returned home in triumph. Tales of her further exploits line the pages of, of the Arachnaeus history books. I don't know how to say it. I'd have to look it up. Jesse. After the, after successfully founding a mercenary knight kingdom in the in Greece's former land, Jesse then proved successful at ruling it. In times of strife, he worked with Alm to secure peace. Tales of his valor are to be told even now, in which he's re his reverence. Fuck words. Uh, you know, he's called the steel midst the sand. I never cared for Jesse. Neither did I. Pa Pala. Having rescued S as planned, Pala returned home in triumph. Tales of her further exploits line the pages of the of the country of their country's history books. Really, that's it. Catch oh, come on to your phone. Yep, go ahead. I'll back. Having rescued Asa's plan, da da da, da I've returned to home in triumph, tales of val tales for their exploits, further line the history books, I'm assuming. Nothing else on her thing, because I didn't use her much. Mycin, here we go. As the as the one as the one kingdom's new chancellor and right hand man to King Alm the first, good Sir Mycin worked tirelessly towards the kingdom's restoration. Despite his formal standing and title, the king and queen continued to love him like a grandfather. I would hope so after everything they've been through. Forsyth, here well, we go. Well, would it be different? Exactly. 
Forsyth joined the One Kingdom's Knights after the war, working hard to bring order back to the land. Time took or time took off some more of his of his caustic edges, and he served many years alongside Clive as a poised and thoughtful lieutenant. Bowie, here we go. What does his epilogue say? After returning to the prairie on Novus, Bowie weathered a trying courtship with May until the two were wed. Children came soon and in plentiful number, giving the pair a host of new excuses to argue. Jo argue joy take curi or joy takes curious forms at times, but Bowie is at was a happy man indeed. Lucas, what happened to him at the end of the game? I'm curious. Lucas joined the Kingdom's Knights, I'm assuming. That's not a surprise. And after retiring, founded a school where he devoted himself to his students' education. His calm intellectual mien won him many friends, and he never longed for companionship throughout the rest of his days. Really? He never wanted a companion? I mean, it kind of fits his character, I guess. Jenny, what happened to her? After falling in the most unlikely love, Jenny wed a man no one would ever expect. As for whom she married, exactly, no one can say. Whenever her friends asked, she replied only with a smile and an automatic laugh. Okay, so we don't know who she, we don't know who she married. Interesting. Atlas. After returning to the mountains, after the mountain home where his brothers waited, Atlas resumed life as a lumberjack. Though his work defending the village from bandits continued to win him admiration, while retired from the army, he was always the first to aid the queen in times of need. Leon Welcomed into the yeah, welcome to the King's Knights, not surprised there. Uh, he remained at Valwar's side until an injury ended his fighting career. He then took up work as a merchant in the city market, where he lived free, happy, and dauntlessly true to himself to the last. Delthea. After the war, Delthea locked away her magic in pursuit and, and pursue a wild and happy life as an ordinary woman. She found herself the perfect husband at, the, at court, but made a point to return to her village often where she would live where she would live in things up with tales of her brother. So they did so those two did bury the hatchet later. Luthier. Painfully aware of the inadequacy of his magic, Luthier journeyed across the sea. What he did there is unclear, but stories tell of a steady stream of angry ruffians who later came to Valentia with a bone to pick with an eccentric mage. Saber? What happened to him at the end? Along with Jesse, Saber helped build the foundation for a new kingdom of and for mercenaries. He continued working as a cell sword for years to come and aided the One Kingdom on many occasions, always with his stunning bride by his side. Who was his bride though, damn it? <laughs> Alright, Kamoi. Intrigued by Jesse's idea, Kamoi helped found yeah, he helped found the Kingdom of Mercenaries, yada yada, not surprised there. And was happily for a time in the end, however, his wanderlust prevailed, and one day he went for a stroll and simply vanished, never to be seen again. Python, what do you do at the end? Just be a lazy ass motherfucker. Wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised he they offered him knighthood. He refused. That's no surprise in my opinion. He chose a quiet life on the head of uh, on the head of a frontier militia that defended villages and towns from brigands. His old friend would visit now and again, and oft and often with a bottle, the two would would vile the night away.